One of the most useful tools that you'll find inside DaVinci Resolve is called the adjustment clip. If you were to look at any of my projects, you would find them all over the place. And if you're not already using them, you are definitely missing out. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five reasons why you need to start using adjustment clips on your projects now. So secure the cup and let's get into it. First and foremost, a quick primer on adjustment clips themselves. If you wanna add one to your project, you first need to open the effects panel by clicking on effects in the top toolbar. Then inside the effects panel, you can find adjustment clips under the effects dropdown, or you can just search for it in the search bar. I highly recommend clicking the little star beside it to add it to your favorites, giving yourself easier access to it in the future. Then all you need to do is drag an adjustment clip onto any track above your other clips and it will apply its changes to anything visible beneath it. So now we're ready to start with the first way that you can be using adjustment clips to speed up and make your workflow better, and that is transform controls. With our adjustment clip over top of the regular clip, we can highlight the adjustment clip, open our inspector in the top right, and then use any of the transform controls to then manipulate the zoom, position, or rotation of what we see on the screen. And your first reaction might be, well, why would we do this on an adjustment clip since we can already just do that on the clip itself? You want reasons? I'll give you reasons. Let's say you have a jump cut that you wanna punch in by 20% on to try and hide that cut. Very YouTube, right? Well, if you make that change on an adjustment clip by changing the zoom to 1.2, now we have the option to drag that adjustment clip out over multiple clips if we want without having to apply the zoom directly to each clip. Or if I change my mind about where I want that punch in to happen, I can just move the adjustment clip easily. Or if you know you want that 1.2 times punch in to happen a bunch of times throughout your project, you can just hold option or alt if you're on a PC and then drag it to copy it over to other parts of your project. You could even save that adjustment into your power bin so that you have it all the time in all of your projects. Even better than that though, if you have a specific push in or pull out speed that you'd like to use for subtle or not so subtle movement, you can create keyframes for the zoom parameter on that adjustment clip, and you can reuse the exact same movement every time by saving it. On top of this, if you've already done any base level corrections for reframing a shot right on the clip itself, like fixing the rotation or moving the position at all, adjustment layers make this a smoother experience instead of trying to figure out what 1.2 times zoom would be on a clip that already has a 1.142 times zoom on it. And on an even simpler note, using an adjustment layer for transform functions is just a nice organizational tool to be able to see where you've done it across the timeline. But now that I've basically given you five reasons within that one reason, let's talk about use number two for adjustment clips, which is adding effects. Just like an adjustment layer has its own transform controls, it can also host any of Resolve's effects too. So let's say you wanted to add the digital glitch effect and a video camera effect. Instead of adding them directly to the clip, you can toss them on an adjustment clip over top of that clip, and then those effects will be applied just like they were on the clip itself. And once again, this is particularly helpful because you can stretch out the adjustment clip to span over a group of clips or an entire sequence. Like if I wanted to make it look like someone was watching me with binoculars for five or six clips in a row, or if I wanted to make it look like a dream sequence for more than just one clip, this makes that so much easier. The next use for adjustment clips is for color grading. If you add an adjustment clip onto your timeline and go to the color page, you'll see it show up in your clips view and you can color grade it just like any other clip. Then any of the clips that happen to be underneath the adjustment clip in the timeline get that treatment. This can be a convenient way to grade groups of clips in a specific way if you have different scenes that need different treatments. Or my own personal favorite way to use the adjustment layers for grading is just as a temporary grade while I'm doing an edit so that I don't have to stare at log footage during the whole process. Then when I'm done the edit and I'm ready to get to the actual color grade, I just delete that adjustment layer and dive into my actual grade. Or if I'm feeling lazy and it looks good enough, I'll just leave it and call it a day. Honestly, I'm way too picky for that to happen very often. 
The next way that you can be using adjustment clips is as an alternative to a fusion composition for adding more complicated text, graphics, or doing things like tracking where you need to be able to interact with the layer beneath. If you add a fusion composition above your clip and go into the fusion page, you'll notice that you can't actually see the background clip below it without adding a media in node and choosing background. But if you do it as an adjustment clip instead and then go to the fusion page the same way, that's already done for you. So now in the adjustment clip version, I can track something in the clip underneath, then add some text and attach the text to the tracker. Similarly to pretty much everything else, there are other ways to do this of course, but I just find this adjustment clip way to be one of the easiest. In a similar vein, sometimes I'll add an adjustment clip and then in the fusion page, I'll add a blur, maybe some film grain, and then I'll add text on top, maybe with a follower so that it animates in a specific way, something that I can really only do in fusion. And voila, I've got a custom made title screen that will blur whatever's beneath it, add texture, and then it'll have a title pop up on top. Top. And the nice thing about this is that I can move it around wherever I want. The fifth thing that you could be doing with the adjustment layers is using them to control multiple layers beneath. Remember earlier when I said it will apply its changes to anything visible on any layer beneath it? And it will apply changes to everything that's visible on any layer underneath it. Well, if you've got multiple layers, let's say a video layer and a text layer, or if you've done some compositing with multiple different clips, you can now control them all together using an adjustment clip. One example of this is with text on top of a video clip. So let's say we have a video clip and we have some text on top of that, but we've placed it off to the left. If we wanted to do a slow zoom in on both the video and the text so that they looked like they were moving together, we could try to use the transform controls on the text layer, but it reacts differently than the transform controls on the video layer beneath it. And even if you could get it to look right, you would still have to do them separately. But by using an adjustment clip on top instead, you can do what we talked about before by keyframing your movement and it will apply to both the text and video layers. And if for some reason later you decided that you wanted the move to apply just to the video layer and not to the text layer, you can just move that text layer above the adjustment clip so it isn't affected by it at all. Another kind of use for this is with any kind of compositing that you're doing with multiple video clips. For example, I've got this shot here where I use the crop and softness sliders to combine these two different clips into one. It's pretty basic, but it gives you the idea. Now, if I put an adjustment clip on top of that, I can easily adjust both clips as if they were one without having to combine them into a compound clip or anything like that. So I've still got the control to adjust them individually if I need to. The way that I specifically used it in this case was by using the crop controls on the adjustment clip to crop the top and bottom and add those black bars to fake the wider cinematic aspect ratio. Now I can stretch out the adjustment clip to cover the entire sequence and everything underneath it will have that crop applied to it. But I have a question for you. If you're already using adjustment clips, are there any other ways that I didn't mention here that you're finding them helpful? Leave a comment down below and let's all help each other. And on your way down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to check out this video next. I think you'll really find it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.